Hi everyone, Vincent Chan from Pokder.net here. As you guys may know, the ROG Strix family are made of components and devices which are distilled down from the overkill ASUS Republic of Gamers lineup. That extends from their smartphones all the way to their motherboards too. For the 10th gen Intel Core processors, they are really expanding their horizons though with a very feature packed ROG Strix Z490e Gaming. So let's take a look. So let's start off with the unboxing. We can see that the box is pretty small, we have a large image of the board as well as the labelling here on the front, while over on the back you get the highlighted features. In the box are quite a large assortment of stuff including a 40mm fan. The fan mounts to the VRM heatsink for better cooling but it might not even be necessary here, more on that later. In addition to that, you get some ROG Strix paraphernalia as well as the standard ARGB and RGB extension cables. Now let's take a look at the board itself. As a member of the ROG Strix family, much emphasis is placed on the design. As such, you might notice that the ROG Strix Z490e gaming might look better than even the ROG boards. Of course, that's pretty subjective but I do kinda like what I'm seeing here. The VRM heatsink is huge as you might expect from a board designed to support whatever the flagship Core i9-10900K might draw. Instead of just being solid aluminium blocks, there are huge slits cut into them to allow air through, thus improving the heat dissipation capability of the board. The latest spoiler you see here is where you mount the 40mm fan to increase airflow over the VRM heatsinks. In addition to that, there's a heat pipe connecting the three blocks to spread out the heat load across more area on the board. Under the heatsinks lie 16 SIC639 power stages by Vichy Inter Technologies ready to handle up to 850 amps. This is split into a 7 plus 1 arrangement configured in ASUS's team power architecture which means two power stages per phase. The integrated graphics gets one phase while the CPU cores get the remaining seven. The ASP 1900B PWM controller handling these power stages is somewhat new as I have never seen it before but you can assume that with this advanced power delivery system, I don't think you need to use the VRM cooling fan unless you're really pushing your 10th gen Intel Core CPU very hard. Moving further down the board, you get two reinforced PCIe slots that support SLI or crossfire configurations. There are also three PCIe X1 and a PCIe X16 slot which are connected to the PCH for other add-in cards like Wi-Fi or USB cards. Speaking of the PCH, it lies under a very fancy plastic shroud which is held down by three screws. Beautiful, but not the most practical of design decisions. The shroud also covers a bit of the first M.2 slot which means you have to undo a total of 5 screws just to install one in the first slot. Luckily, the second one is fully exposed without being hindered by the shroud. Meanwhile, if you prefer more conventional storage, to the right of the PCH lies 6 SATA ports. Along the bottom of the board, we find a huge array of headers as well as a Q-code readout. This wasn't available on the Zek 390E, so this makes for a nice upgrade. While the Q-code readout does seem like an interesting option for overclockers, there are no onboard power buttons or the useful retry button, which makes benching this board a little bit more complicated. It's not impossible, but it will be a bit more troublesome. In the lower left corner lies the audio hardware which consists of the Supreme FX S1220A codec and Nichicon capacitors for premium onboard audio. There is output via the audio ports on the rear IO shield which hosts an assortment of other ports too. You get the display port and HDMI port at the top, 4 USB 2.0 ports, 2 USB 3 ports and 4 USB 3.1 ports, one of which, which is a USB-C port. As the flagship of the ROG Strix Z490 series, you also get BIOS flashback here which is very helpful for BIOS updates as you can install BIOSes even without a CPU install. The LAN port here is powered by the Intel i225V 2.5 gigabit internet chip while Wi-Fi is courtesy of the Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX201 chip enabling up to 2.4 gigabit per second over wireless. Now moving on, the BIOS is chock full of features for overclocking which is what you would expect from an ASUS ROG Strix motherboard. Air overclocking is also offered here so you can push your CPU to the limit without too much hassle and if you want to do it manually, you can too with all the options, toggles and parameters that need tuning pretty well laid out in the feature pack to BIOS. And that's pretty much it for the ROG Strix Z490e gaming motherboard. It's going to be a pretty interesting board for those who don't need overq overclocking features of the ASUS ROG boards but want a beautiful board that will look great in any build. We don't know the pricing yet but do stay tuned for more information about the board as we'll be taking a deeper dive into the board in a full review. I hope you guys enjoyed this overview of the ROG Strix Z490e Gaming and if you guys did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and like our Facebook page. Until the next video guys, bye bye!